Hey Dallas, today I have the pleasure of having Dr. Hunsaker here in our CJ Cosmetic Surgery Studios. Dr. Hunsaker, thank you so much for this interview. I've been willing to interview you for a few months. We did one before, right. but today we're going to talk about something that everybody wants to know, and it's TCs. Well, that's part of it. Right? right. <laughs> So, um, a lot of ladies ask, they send us messages on Instagram and they want us to recommend them how many CCs they should get. Right. Um, when you guess, get a question like that, what, what do you usually say? Yeah, well, my first answer is it's not a, it's not a volume operation, it's, it's a dimensional operation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the number of CCs in our mind is root secondary or tertiary even in, in our consideration. We arrive to a number of CCs, but what's important is the dimensions. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, which we choose a profile, mm -hmm. and then however many CCs that is, right. is what we use. So when I have an opportunity to be with the patient, I show them implants, which we'll do here, mm -hmm. right? And show them how dramatically different implants can be, depending on the dimensions, even though they're the same volume. Right. Okay. So if I say, well, I think you should have 600 cc's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, would you want? Let's hold them up this way so you can see them. Mm -hmm. Would you want this 600 cc or this 600 cc? Wow, there is a big difference here. So if I hold it up sideways, you can see there's a tremendous difference in projection mm -hmm. and a huge difference in diameter, but they're the same volume. Interesting. So, who would be a good candidate for this 600cc and this 600cc? Well, the most important thing about this one is it's wide. Mm -hmm. So, somebody who has a wide, what they call base diameter, a lot of the patients are familiar with base diameter. Mm -hmm. And so, someone who has a wide chest, which is a lot more common on taller people as well, right. um, they need the width to fill them out. Mm -hmm. But for this exact implant, this is a low profile implant. So a person for this would be somebody who already is wide, has a fair amount of existing breast tissue, mm -hmm. and only wants a modest increase because it doesn't have much protection. Mm -hmm. So if if a patient, you know, if it was this look on a five foot three patient mm -hmm. and a five foot ten patient wanted that look, they might need this width, but they need this projection or more, or this projection or more. Mm -hmm. So they need way more than the six hundred cc. Right. In fact, a lot of times in those patients we can't use silicone because we can only go to eight and they might need nine, a thousand, eleven hundred. So then you would have to one. use what kind of a saline. Implant? saline? Because we can overfill mm -hmm. 800 cc implants to achieve a greater volume on that, on that base width. Mm -hmm. So we do end up with a number, but getting to that number and like that number's not a, enough. Mm -hmm. I often say to patients, oh, but you want 600, what profile? Well, I don't know, they say. Mm -hmm. And they don't know, it's not because they're dumb or anything, it's just right. they're, they're not in the business. Absolutely. They don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So they might have a friend who has a complete different frame and um, size, perhaps the friend is tall or, or, or shorter than them, and they got, um, you know, 300 cc's and they think that's going to be what they need and it's right. something totally different. And that's a that's a, that's a common comparison. Mm -hmm. People will either say someone in a picture had something or a friend right. had something. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't know what their friend or that picture's breast, how much breast tissue they started with, for mm -hmm. example, because that impacts it. Because remember, you have to add the volume that you've already got to your final result. Right. So someone who's very, very flat mm -hmm. needs a lot more projection, which ends up being more volume, than somebody with the exact same build who maybe has a, a B cup breast. Right. Because you got to add volume just to get to the B cup, which is a starting point for the other patient. Mm -hmm. That's very uh, interesting. Um, Doc, one question that I also have and that we get on Instagram as well is um, what's the difference between a teardrop implant and the one that is not a teardrop? Or Well, I mean, the actual uh, difference in the implant is the teardrop implant or the contoured implant mm -hmm. is pre-shaped, it's pre-formed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it has a it has a form that it holds. And a lot of uh, patients think that a teardrop may offer a different cosmetic result mm -hmm. than a round, because it makes sense in your head. Mm -hmm. And you see pictures, and they show a picture of a round implant, and then they show a picture of a 
teardrop, but most of the time when you take a picture, the, the implants are flat on a surface and they're taking the picture. But when you take an imp a, a round implant and tip it up, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just showing the camera, it becomes a teardrop implant. It has that natural look. And no matter how it's oriented, mm -hmm. it has the same look. Okay? Interesting. Now, the problem, the difficulty, the challenge sometimes with the teardrop implant is it has to be oriented exactly right, exactly vertically, because if it's a little bit off, mm -hmm. it holds its shape, unlike these. So it has a little higher reoperation rate. Mm -hmm. It actually doesn't have a different cosmetic result. We know this from two big studies that have been done that you really can't tell the difference on the, the teardrop or contoured implants and the round implants. You can evaluate the patient. It's mm -hmm. interesting. Now, um, this is the million dollar question, Rafa. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to um, CCs and sizes, and perhaps, you know, like a, you can't evaluate me um, immediately, but um, if I were to get um, a breast augmentation and I wanted something natural looking, how many CCs do you believe I should get, Doc? Yeah, well, of course, I won't answer that. <laughs> But I'll give you more information about Thank you, it, right? I love that. If you want natural, mm -hmm. don't do your breasts. Okay. Right? But, so it's fake. Mm -hmm. Right. But, so, and I'm not kidding you, everybody's idea of natural is different. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Absolutely. you just have to sit with a few patients and, and see the pictures they show you, and they'll show you something that's obviously fake, and right. go, I want something like this. Sure. And it, you know, natural like this, does okay. And it, you know, that's okay. It's a good looking mm -hmm. breast implant. Sure. Okay. Um, so the smaller you go, the less fake it looks. Right. The bigger you go, the more fake it looks. Right. Uh, the more cover you have of your own in terms of body fat and breast tissue, the harder it is to get a fake look. Sure. Because it's softened by your overlying tissues. Mm -hmm. So it's not a black and white, mm -hmm. it's a gray scale. Right? <laughs> That's why I communicate through pictures. Sure. I mean, we, I have people who use wannabe pictures. Mm -hmm. And to show me, if they're looking in a mirror six months, a year after surgery, from their belly button to their collarbone, what sort of proportion are they looking for? Sure. That's a great communication tool because you're really not going to decide if you're happy based on what bra size you're wearing mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. How many CCs you have, you're going to look in a mirror right. and decide if you're happy. That's true. And if it's a bra size you didn't expect, but you're happy looking in the mirror, huh? that's perfect. You well, know? thank you so much, Dr. Sure. Bunsaker. It's always a pleasure. Having these talks with you, I always meet him in the hallway, and I always, you know, he's always so busy as well. But um, thank you so much for taking the time. My pleasure. Time. Glad to do it. Appreciate it. All right.